In this episode, we've got a Fiat 500. It's got a battery warning light coming on. The lady's taken to a garage. She's had the charge rate checked. That's checking out fine. Battery's good. All that is charging, but we've still got the light on. She's got no power steering. We're going to be checking limb bus control. We're going to be using a new tool you haven't seen on the channel yet, which is good for short circuit detection and open circuit detection. Let's get into this episode. Hope you enjoy. Right, welcome back. So we've got this Fiat 500. As we say, it's got a battery light on, power steering comes and goes. Takes about a minute, minute and a half, sometimes two minutes for the warning light to come on. Let's give it a scan, see what the ECU thinks it is. These are gonna be ECU controlled alternators. This is not your Billy Basic little wire going down from a bulb. This is all ECU controlled. So it's limb bus controlled, etc. So let's get it plugged in, see what the ECU thinks the fault is, and then we'll do some basic checks, see what we can find. Right, we've given it a scan with a ThinkCar 399. As you can see, we have got U0413-87. So we can do a code search on it. That takes you straight into the all-time favorite Google. Plenty of posts where this has come up, people have fitted an aftermarket alternator on it that hasn't fixed it because there's something else going on. Then they've had to revert back to another genuine alternator when the original one probably wasn't wrong. So. The garage has done the right thing, sent it out of RMS, have it checked out before you fit any parts on it. So there we go. Let's get back off Google. We can go into Haynes Pro. That comes straight up. So Haynes Pro is loaded onto this. It is an extra feature on it, but it's well worth having. So let's go into there. Fiat 500. There we go, it's 1.2. to electronics and where are we starting and charging has it got stop start uh, I don't think it's got stop start uh, there we go Let's try that down to that oh that circuit so there we go, E1 is engine control module and O1 is the alternator circuit. We've got the main positive coming up to the starter and out. The starter's working, which means the engine is gonna be okay. It's charging, so we know that side's okay. So all we've got is this ECU controlled wire. So we're gonna check here first, pull this one out, see if we've got a signal on it, check that, see what it's doing, and then we'll go from there. Right, so we've got the bonnet up, we're going to check onto the alternator. It is tucked right down the back. There's a power steering pump and it's the one underneath that. So hopefully I can get my hand down there, get the limb plug off it, see what voltage we've got coming out of there, see if we've got a signal. Then we'll work out what we're going to do. If we have got a signal, more likely the alternator. If we haven't, we're going to go back to the ECU, check it from there. So let's have a look at that. Right, so we have checked the limb bus cable and we get any odd tiny little sing signal. Nothing serious. So we're not getting a good signal down to here. We've got a tiny volt. Let's go back to the ECU. Let's back probe it without really disturbing anything. See what signal we've got there. So let's remove that. Go straight onto the battery. Into the battery. And to here. Now you can see Getting a good signal down the uh, down it now. Perfect. So we know we've got an iffy wire. We just need to trace that through, see what we can find. Right, so people have asked us when we do some of these open circuit faults, why we don't use one of them circuit detectors and beepers and all that sort of stuff. We've had one years. They either work instantly or they don't. And quite often it's not worth getting out of the box. But let me show you what it does. So this is a tone generator it sends a signal down the wire and it's meant to do it. It does both things. When it's short circuit, it'll point you in a direction. And when it's open circuit, it points you in a direction. And it's meant to be where the, uh, where the short circuit is, the wand will stop as you run it along the wire. And where the open circuit is, it runs it along the wire. But if you've got corrosion down the circuit and you've got, so as you see, we had a signal coming down it, that signal is gonna be the same when we connect up to this. 
So we're going to back probe into there. Second generator. This is the receiver from this generator. I'll just show you. So this beeps, it goes right down the back of the engine, it comes out this end, it's beeping away, and that's showing it right the way up to the ECU. But we know we've got a faulty wire on it. So it's not too bad if it's completely broken, but if it's got any sort of path through it, as you can see, it's still saying we've got a good signal. So once I strip this out and show you where it is, you'll see the difference between just do it manually and using these tone generators. Like I say, just some, sometimes they work, they point you in direction, but you can be there for hours mucking about and tracing this and tracing that. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but that's the reason why we don't always use it. But I will prove it to you once I found this broken wire. All right, so let's get all that off, get a bit tidy, and then we can strip a bit of this loom out. It's not going too far, so we should be able to just give it a bit of a tug test and see if we can see roughly what's happening. Let's get this out of the way first. Do I need to take that air box out? I don't think so. got a bit of open up a ball conduit in here I'm hoping I can open it up find that wire tug it see which way it is uh, shall I take that off oh man it's cut of 10 mils let's get it out of the way uh. that there that there So I've always banged on about doing a bit of Kaizen and time in motion and all that sort of stuff, but you struggle to keep up with it. I should really have my tools over here. I should be able to turn around and grab them, but... And then the phone rings. Oh! So hopefully this conduit will come apart. There's this side of the loom's all taped up. This side is just run into conduit, into a holder, and down into normal flexible conduit. So it's sh oh, stabbed myself. And these clip apartable doodars. Right, so we've got that bit off. Now what we've got to find is the grey and white wire down here. Grey and black even. Right, so I managed to get the conduit off. We've found the grey and black. Let's get it out. And there we go. So, look at that. It's gone straight through. You zoom in on that. It's gone right through. Right on that circuit there. So, we knew we had a broken wire and the voltage is still coming through. So, now what we've got to do is strip that out a bit further, get to that wire, do a solder joint on there, and yeah, and just double check it, make sure it's all okay. Right, let's get this repaired and I'll show you what he's doing. Right, so that's all back together. We've soldered that wire up. We're going to have a quick check, make sure that we've got a good signal coming back out there now. Then we're going to connect it up to the alternator, clear all the fault codes out of it, make sure she's good, charging, light stays off. So let's get that done, show you on the scope. So let's connect this up quickly. And look at that. Lovely square wave. Perfecto. So now I've got to do is get that back onto the back of the alternator, which is not easy. That goes down there. 
behind that bit. So we'll go behind a pipe. Uh, and then tuck down. It's a nightmare. I used to be a motorbike mechanic, and that was hard. Get you around between a frame to try and do spark plugs and stuff. But this is hard work. Where is it? There's the plug. Right, that's that plugged in. <sighs> right, let's get the scanner on it, clear the codes. Make sure it's all okay. Right, so we've had it running about five minutes while we're just plugging into it. Just want to make sure that the light doesn't come back on. Um, just giving it a full scan, see what comes up. So let's just go into engine. Intelligent alternator, and it's a stored code, not permanent code like it was. So, yeah, that's good. All codes. Uh, let's clear everything. Get full codes. No fault codes. So last time we done that, we had to go out and back into it to confirm. Let's just do it again. And it is running, but, so if it's gonna pick up anything, it will pick it up now. And she's beautiful, Bernard. No light on. It's been running about five, six, seven minutes now. And it will come on without a minute, two minutes. So that. Is another one done. So could have gone down the wrong path for fitting all out, etc. Could have had it all done before, as I said, but they didn't. They brought it straight to us. Perfect job. Perfect outcome. So thanks very much for watching. If you like what you see, give us a little like, give us a little comment, share it with your friends, do what you want to do with it, and we'll see you on the next one. If you like what you see and you'd like to see some more, I'm going to leave a link over in this side. Go and check out all the old videos. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link over here. If you become a member, we are doing mail shots, etc. now. We'll be able to let you know exactly when we've got new videos coming out, anything that's coming up in the future. And these are the people that signed up this month. So thanks very much to them, and we'll see you on the next one.